you're going to challenge the bible says listen to me it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds is a casting down every imagination is the word yes sir the vain imaginations of men and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ you're going to pray this is priesthood now are we together now you're going to pray and declare that everything that is not consistent with the character of God and the speakings of prophecy hear the word of the Lord I come as one sent anointed by God and you will lift your voice and begin to make decrees the Bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified lift your voice and pray make decrees speak speak to systems speak to structures are there men of prayer here I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost Lagos, hear my voice. Someone is praying. Bagada, hear my voice. Ikeja, hear my voice. Leki, hear my voice. Africa, hear my voice. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every barrier be torn down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every climate above me, programming woes, programming delay, stopping a generation from hearing your voice, manipulating your influence across a territorial space. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying over your ministry. I challenge powers over your business. I confront spirits in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I silence speakings. I silence ordinances. I silence operations in the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray. Shalabarakata. Kebratos keparita. Shakata balaka. psalm 3 that says many are they that rise up against me it says many are they that say where is thy god but then it says but thou O lord that you are a shield for me then it says you are my glory and he uses the next prayer point you are the lifter of my head it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn even when the head of a unicorn is down the horn is not down the horn remains up at all times and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please listen listen i want you to take this prayer session seriously you are going to pray lord the grace the anointing the unction for the next level of my life the compelling ability of the spirit that must rest upon me and will resonate like an earthquake across a territory the inferno of fire that must come upon my life and turn me to a wonder i receive it now lift your voice and begin to pray the grace that will make my music ministry step into another dimension for the sake of his majesty the grace that will make my business become a wonder and praise the grace that will make church and ministry a wonder and in that grace oh god that help men arise Greater dimensions of the healing anointing. 
mighty, greater dimension of the grace for wealth and abundance, greater dimension of the grace for prayer, greater dimension of the grace for giving, greater dimension of the grace for service, greater dimension. Let me pray for you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I decree and I declare over everyone here and all the branches and all connected online. I pray by the ministry of the Spirit in the name of Jesus, may mighty anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prayer and supplication that will grant you the grace to travail I declare by the hand of God let it rest upon you now these three women three women I'm seeing oil being poured on all three of them help them please new dimension I shift you in the spirit new dimension new dimension new dimension take that fire new dimension dimension of power dimension of grace i amplify your voice i give your products wings in the spirit i command the generation to hear your voice i place something upon your life that defies being denied i forbid you from being rejected i decree and declare expand 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 I speak by the spirit expand at the choir expand move to new levels expand increase increase in knowledge increase in prosperity increase in influence increase in wisdom prophecy they are taking for a prey and none say yet restore none say yet this is one of the benefits of coming to the house of God listen let me tell you if the devil robs you of the house of God he has cheated you please hear me those inside and outside you are not doing God a favor when you come to his house you are coming to a platform where prophecy can be available to intercept with something in your life for three days they didn't find a donkey they said there is a holy man of God let's go to him when they went to him he said rise up and i will come and tell you what is in your heart he said the donkey you have been looking for watch how prophecy changes things you have been looking for it i place a prophetic word on it it has been found number two on your way back you are going to see two men three men carrying bread two of them will salute you and give you the bread three you will go to a garrison of the philistines and the hand of god will come upon you let it be that when these three signs happen you will do as occasion serves you for god is with you in other words levels have changed something has happened you see people who tell you they went and something didn't happen then they came for one koinonia service then they went back you never go back after any service the same I'm opening your eyes, you see. Just like you did now, you are going to live with something. It's just that you are not paying attention to how your environment starts treating you. Are we together? Sister, it is the will of God for you to triumph this year. My brothers, hear me. It is the will of God for you to triumph this year. And any force that wants to remain and keep you must give way. It must give way. You are not negotiating. It must give way. I told you that I have sensed this in my spirit. That there are people here who are at the edge of the next level. Just a little guidance. Prophetic guidance like I'm doing. And it will break out of some levels. That even your loved ones will call you and say, Come, I know you are serving God, but I don't. Want, what is the meaning of this thing? What are you doing? What is it that you are doing? Then you will know that God did not lie when he said it is your year of triumph.
then you will give him thanks he said thanks be to god you are asking god for a job whereas he wants to open a gate for you a gate a gate a gate brothers and sisters not a job a gate not a job you are asking god for marriage whereas he wants to open your destiny marriage is too small these three things are available here this night the grace to pray and reprogram yourself sacrifice and then a prophetic word it took one man for sin to come to the world it took one man for negativism to be programmed in your life it would take a prophetic word but you see not just every prophecy every man speaks according to the measure of grace available it says whatever we do we should do according to the measure of grace so if i do not have the grace to set you free i can pray it but it will not happen it's not that i'm not anointed the grace is not enough whenever i am praying for people you see me pray i tell you that i'm not praying to you just for my faith that okay i prayed the word level no we use another mystery to assure the result it's called your covenant my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my praise is calling you Take my grace, take my grace, calling Let me tell you a little story. Hold on. You see this thing I'm wearing? I went for a meeting in Lagos. And a particular gentleman who is a fashion designer, trusting God for a new level, he just saw me and measured me like that on the stage. And went back with his wife and sold it in 24 hours requested from the pastor that they will see me he came with his wife and said man of god we made you a cloth and i was just laughing i said this guy's life will change like day and night brothers and sisters i'm not lying he did reach one week somebody gave him three million <laughs> nothing happens by itself everything is provoked you do nothing you get nothing hear me help that guy you do nothing you get nothing period it's as simple as that you do nothing you get nothing you sit down and watch life you don't get anything from it anointing will not just come to your life just because you think you are around koinonia breakthrough will not just come it is provoked we are going to do these three things this night I want you in the next five to ten minutes you are going to blast in tongues until every spiritual roof over your life this way lift your voice and pray Shaka, 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 shaka
Everyone shout this after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every limitation placed over my life, placed over my destiny. I reprogram you now. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every door and every gate in the realm of the spirit assigned to open up and has been closed. I prophesy upon you. Be open now. My door the next level. My door the next chapter of breakthrough. I reassign you. I reassign you. Be open. Oh, door of favor. Be open. Gates of breakthrough. Be open. So God of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Listen, say after me in the name of Jesus. I speak to spirits, I speak to covenants, I speak to altars holding my life holding my destiny by the covenant of the blood release my destiny now lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every physical reality reoccurring in my life that I do not like. Whatever programmed you in the realm of the spirit, I cancel that programming now. Lift your voice and pray.
I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare that any element of the supernatural that has been hijacked by darkness and is being manipulated against my destiny, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I destroy you now. Lift your voice and pray. So to minister to you i tell you if i if god shows you what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and the way doors are opening up when you force it it will open help those under the anointing you see people getting their deliverances strange miracles being released hallelujah say in the name of jesus any spiritual and human agent who is in partnership with any spiritual law to fight me this night I release judgment on you lift your voice and pray I command judgment I command judgment I command judgment I provoke judgment I command judgment I invoke judgment upon anyone in partnership in fraternity with the powers of the heaven to walk against my life I provoke judgment may the God of vengeance arise tonight in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus oh at hear the word of the Lord oh winds hear the word of the Lord I decree I declare to every element of the supernatural bring my breakthrough bring my blessings Bring my favor. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I speak to the earth. The prophet said, For out of it comes bread. I provoke my portion. I provoke my portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I speak to my helpers. Hear what I'm saying and pray it with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. I speak to my helpers. Every law stopping you from coming to my help I release you now manifesting my destiny lift your voice and pray 
release you. Every helper over Koinonia, every helper over my destiny, every helper over your destiny. So I release it. Let's pray one last prayer point and then I'll begin to prophesy over your life. Say in the name of Jesus, covenants associated with my family, every altar associated with the pain of my family, tonight as an ambassador, I stand on behalf of my loved ones and I cancel those ordinances lift your voice cancel it ordinances of death ordinances of bad luck Please everyone raise your hand. Just raise your hand and be and be silent. Just a keyboard. Please raise your hand if you can. Just be silent. the angels of the Lord just move. I command right now stretching my hand I've seen many padlocks in the realm of the spirit all padlocks all padlocks and I'm about to speak to them now that's somebody's destiny being opened now in the name of Jesus everyone here who is represented in the vision that I've seen. Let your destiny open now. I command deliverance. Deliverance to your destiny. I open it. Shoto, shoto. I open it. I open it now. I open it now. Inside, outside, online, I open it now. The yoke of bad luck, repeated cycles of misfortune over anyone here. You may not know it, hear me. But if there is anyone carrying a negative yoke that is commanding everything around you to be negative. I see fire coming on a few people. It's a massive deliverance that will happen now. At the count of three, may the fire from the throne room locate such a one and burn off those shafts right now. One, two, three. Right now, right now, right now, Sokoto Sabada. Inside, outside, the fire from the throne is falling on destinies. Falling on destinies. Bad luck. Misfortune. Bad luck. Misfortune. It must come to an end.
Hallelujah. I want you to repeat this after me and then just be silent. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, visit negative patterns. Repeated patterns in my life now. Just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. That's the instruction. Just keep quiet and watch what happens now. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere, Lord, inside and outside, break patterns, break patterns, break patterns, break patterns, repeated patterns, repeated patterns. My God, my God. I, I see, I see, I know this is the vengeance of God. Patterns. You may not know, but you are under an atmosphere and an unction that is about to change your life. Break patterns. Break patterns, oh God. Hallelujah. God wants to use you. The Lord wants to deliver fathers not mothers fathers but he wants to use you here the lord is showing me there are at least between 31 to 41 people fathers right now with negative things on their head god is going to use you as a point of contact lord let your power move to those ones 41 i place that word in the realm of the spirit now in the name of jesus i place that word in the name of jesus if it comes upon you there's something in your family if it once it comes on you just know there's something in your family if you have never known it know it now if that fire lands on your head there is something in your family that is giving way no you can't escape it except it's not on your parents if it is on them it must be visited now the vengeance of the god of israel inside outside inside outside that sword of vengeance Hallelujah. there is a sister here the fire of restoration is landing on you now there is a sister is coming from heaven strong restoration of your spiritual life strong restoration of the operation of favor in your life whatever happened to it is over it's coming afresh now coming afresh now coming afresh now every negative voice that speaks to your spirit and misleads you making you believe it is the spirit of god i challenge right now every antichrist voice masquerading as the voice of the spirit giving you instructions every negative voice masquerading as the holy ghost speaking to you giving you instructions that are activating wrong laws in your life i command judgment on those spirits now hallelujah just be patient with me we're rounding up i, I tell you the liberty the liberty that i see in the realm of the spirit even me i'm satisfied i'm satisfied with what i'm seeing satisfied with what i'm seeing very very strange breakthroughs what is left for you now is to await the physical manifestation remember i told you it's always in the realm of the spirit you just thought you fell no keep watching you will soon see dimensions of breakthrough that even you, you will not be able to account for. Some of you will start, make sure you testify. Many of you from tomorrow, you will hear your loved ones 
discussed even things they didn't discuss with you they don't know what happened but you know what happened to them I prophesy over your life carry favor carry favor from the realm of the spirit let there be a release of favor passing through the hands of men into your life in the name of Jesus hear me I've not prayed for students writing exams people have been sending me text messages I'm not happy with let's change some things now every mistake you have made in your exams that is reflective of your humanity that is reflective of your carelessness from the realm of the spirit we correct it now from the realm of the spirit we correct it now anyone here who has been going blank in the exam hall I command that blinding spirit I command it to leave your mind now hear me from tonight may you have dreams and see your questions I release it to you in the name of Jesus advance revelations by the spirit over your most difficult exams you will see them before you write them in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here who has not testified and has clapped for others while they testify I give you now till miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives by Friday as surely as God lives return with a strange testimony believe me return with a strange testimony whatever has refused to work in your life I force it now to start working you hear me Whoever has despised you because of something on you that kept making people despise you, I place something else on you and I command that shame and reproach be rolled away from your life. One more time, I place something on you. It's an unction, it's a grace. And with it, I roll away shame and reproach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, a little instruction for us. Don't miss miracle service. From now till Friday, please make sure you take at least, even if it is 10 to 15 minutes every day, praise and rejoice and dance before God. Do this thing I'm telling you, just do it. Be obedient people don't be foolish you don't have to be the one to sing go and get uh, um, get whatever it is and you don't have to dance in the presence of people around if your room is not convenient find one bush somewhere stroll around prayer department on Tuesday take out some time even if it's 30 minutes you people should dance before God huh Dance on behalf of the house for miracle service before God. Rejoice as if you are out of your mind before God. This is what I want you to do. Please, listen. I want you, if you can, to write your prayer request. All I want you to do every day is place it on the ground and dance your life before it. Please, Koinonia, I can kneel down and beg you. I love you and I want you to experience results. 
I will not tell you what I'm not doing. Write it down. You can write it this night. No job. No marriage. Bad luck. No breakthrough. For your loved ones who are spiritually sensitive and they will not laugh at you. Tell them this is an instruction. They should do it. If both of you, if two or three of you are believers and you love God and you believe in yourselves, you can do it together. Anyone that is doing big man is in here. I tell you, that's the person who will never see any results. All this big man is in, big man is in, is why people don't get results. Are we together? Dance before him. If you can do it in the night, that's the best time for you. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or as the Holy Ghost instructs you. Dance before him. Do you know what you are doing? You are mocking Satan. You are literally, literally mocking the devil. The Bible says in Psalm 2 that the Almighty will sit on his throne and laugh first. After that, he will now execute vengeance. You are dancing. Forget about the problem. Remember we just read that whatever we see can change. So write it down. SS, write it down. If you're, let your aunties participate. No pregnancy, write it down. I finished school 10 years ago, no job. Don't start saying, Lord, see my genius, have job. That, that's a stupid thinking. Don't let that spirit of bitterness come. Let me give you a little precaution. This prophecy has been declared in the open now. Satan will orchestrate people to annoy you. Hear me. Hear what I'm telling you. The devil will orchestrate people to annoy you. Some of you, as you are going back now, you will see things that will kill your joy. Some of you is in your home, right in your home. Your husband, your wife, your children, even yourself. Some of you will hear a foolish report. Just know that's the devil trying to rob you of what must manifest this week. We are agreeing with God. The moment a thing provokes your spirit, just laugh it away. Laugh it away. I know it's painful, but laugh it away. You can be crying in your spirit, but don't let the devil see your tears this week. This week is a week of joy. Provoke yourself. Somebody calls you and says, it will not work. Just like you said, that rent, with, I thought you prophesied that it will happen this week. The rent is no longer coming. Don't worry. Laugh. They call you at your job place and somebody wants to come and harass you and make nonsense and rubbish. Don't worry. Laugh. Enter your room. Lock your door. And, and laugh at the devil like a fool. I mean laugh literally. And dance before God. Dance before God. Celebrate him and dance before God. You may be sweating. I know there is heat. But dance before God. Let the sweat keep coming. After, Don't prophesy. Don't do anything. Just dance before God. Next day, carry your request again. Dance before God. On Tuesday, prayer department, after you pray, take out time. Dance on behalf of the house. Let's see the power that will stop you from triumphing this week. This third month, it will not finish all before you have your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I had a vision. This is how I want to start tonight. I had a vision and in that vision it was um, a room and I just saw people moving and they were lamenting and it looked as though something was missing. This is what I saw in my vision. And they were looking around and then all of a sudden light came and the people began to rejoice and I had the word restoration this i want you to believe every word that comes from the mouth of the lord i'll be teaching very very briefly on the principle of restoration and then we'll pray i trust that as we pay attention we will not only learn but that the power and the grace to make that word become a reality in our lives will be released even whilst the word comes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that it is possible for men to lose people, relationships, as we see all through scripture. 
in the Bible, people lost loved ones, people lost relationships. In the Bible, it is also clear that people can lose things. We see that things were lost in the Bible. For instance, the story of the axe head that fell. He said, alas, master, it was borrowed. So we see that people can lose things. But we also see from scripture that people can lose time. That it is not only men that can be lost. It is not only things that can be lost. But the greatest loss as recorded by scripture and from scripture is time. Is that true? So God is able to restore people. We see that in stories that depict resurrection. Resurrection is a type of restoration. And then we see God restoring things. Not just over the lives of individuals but even over nations. The prophet said by this time tomorrow. And there was a complete restoration of the economic dignity of a region. But then the Bible also says that in God's dealing with men, he is so mighty that he sustains the power to restore even time. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel 2 and verse 25. Joel 2 and verse 25. I will restore to you the years, not just the things, you can have the restoration of relationships you can have the resurrection of things but let me tell you real dominion is dominion over time because the unit of destiny is measured in time when you meet a dying man he will not ask you for more things when you meet a dying man his greatest request is time because if you can give him time every other thing can be found in time are we together now when you lose relationships under a certain condition you can easily have another relationship when you lose things people have lost monies people have lost properties and with time they got it back but when you lose time there is no factor that guarantees the restoration of time again are we together now yes because it is not given unto men to live in the past physically but god is saying in my dealings with men i can restore people i can restore things and i can restore time this is very important I examined the subject of losses um, it is a word that people do not want to hear the moment I mention a loss or losses either to a businessman or someone who just lost a loved one it's not a word that anyone wants to be associated with at all is that true when you hear the word profit you hear the word gain now these are words that we like nobody wants to hear the word loss or losses and by the spirit of god very quickly i just want to exhort us i'm not really doing an extensive exegesis of god's word just a charge really so that we can pray a few reasons why individuals lose in life please pay attention tonight's message can be a lifeline for someone based on that which god showed me there are a number of reasons and in as much as every new year, every new season, we aspire for the best of God in our lives and our destinies. If we do not know what makes for a life of defeat and retrogression, we will continue repeating the same mistakes. And you have every new year look like the former year in spite of the prophetic words. And so God is giving us a chance by his word to be able to ascend through knowledge to a higher realm where our results become predictable you can know 
that you are done with losses and retrogression are we together now our confidence in this kingdom is based on the integrity of god's word there are two qualities of god that the believer builds his confidence upon number one is his integrity number two is his ability these are the pillars of the believer's confidence so when people ask you based on what do you think god will not fail you it is based on his integrity god is not a man that he should lie he is not a man you may have heard it in my teachings that god only became a man but he is not a man are we together yes the bible tells us that men lie they don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men so he says god is not a man that he should lie he's not the son of man that is the basis of your confidence it means god only says what he can do so if you hear god say anything he has vetted his ability to find out that 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 what he has said it is within his power to make it come to pass are we together now this is very powerful so his integrity and his ability let's examine a few reasons why people experience losses of all kinds in their lives are you learning already number one lack of discernment hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 let's study a few scriptures as fast as we can hebrews 2 and verse 1 lack of discernment it says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard less at any time we should let them sleep say discernment discernment is very important isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 these are scriptures that show us the danger of not having discernment isaiah 1 3 it says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's creep but israel does not know my people do not consider that means these people have not built themselves to be able to discern we lose in life because we do not know how to discern the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to know what god is doing in these days if you lack discernment you will lose a lot of things it can cost you even your bishopric he said his bishopric let another take are we blessed ezekiel chapter 12 let's look at one or two more scriptures ezekiel chapter 12 we'll start from verse 1 and 2 ezekiel chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 the word of the lord also came to me saying please let's read verse 2 together ready one to read son of man thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious people it says which have eyes to see and see not they have ears to hear and hear not for they are that is his definition of lack of discernment that you have eyes and yet you do not see you have ears and you do not hear people lose because they do not have the ability to see and to hear very very powerful acts 28 and verse 27 let that be the last verse for this and then we'll jump to the next acts 28 and verse 27 he said that for the heart of these people is wax gross for their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them there is a relationship between discernment and restoration there is a relationship between lack of discernment and losses 
many people many believers have not trained their faculty of spiritual perception to discern discern people discern opportunities discern seasons he says and of the sons of Issachar men who had the understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do and because of that their brethren were at their command number two why do people lose in this kingdom carelessness number two carelessness hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 where we read hebrews 2 and verse 3 just pay attention to these scriptures and let them speak to your spirit hebrews 2 and verse 3 how shall we escape it says if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him. How shall we escape when there is neglect, carelessness? Many believers have demonstrated carelessness across every area of their lives. Carelessness with opportunities, carelessness with moments, carelessness with prophetic words. Are we together now? Yes. yes. Judges chapter 11. Let's read from verse 30. We're discussing the reasons why people lose in this kingdom as an attempt to understand the value of restoration. And we said number one is lack of discernment, the absence of it. Number two, carelessness. Are we there? Judges 11 from verse 30. Remember the story of Jephthah? Pay attention. It says, Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. You will see the consequence of carelessness right now. Carelessness with words. Carelessness with commitments. It says, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands. We are reading to 35. Then it shall be that whatsoever comfort out of the door to meet me. When I return in peace from the children of Ammon. Shall surely be the Lord. And I will offer it to for, for a bond offering say carelessness this is a man who is speaking carelessly this this is clearly emotions that lord if you give me victory anything that comes out of my house i will give you as a bond offering follow closely so Jephthah passed over to the children of Ammon to fight against them and the lord delivered them into his hands are we still here and he smote them even until all of those places and thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel 34 it says and Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house and behold who came out his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances and she was his only child say carelessness we lose things in life because we do not allow the holy spirit to lead us people make careless statements careless commitments and many of us the reason why we've not been able to experience advancement and even restoration is because we make careless commitments carelessness beside her he had neither son nor daughter 35 and it came to pass when he saw her he rent his clothes and said alas my daughter thou hast brought me very low and thou art one of them that trouble me for i have opened my mouth unto the lord and i cannot go back There are people who made commitments that were beyond their financial level. Emotionally, they just met a family of 10 people and said, I will take care of all of you to university. And the wife said, but how, what is the financial state of the family? Said, and they clapped for you when you spoke it and they captured it on TV. Carelessness, hasty in speech. Carelessness, especially with words. There are people who have said things that they wish they did not say because careless utterances have cost people years. Damage control for years. Is someone learning now? Yes, the reason why we lose in this kingdom, carelessness. Carelessness. Hmm. 
in matthew chapter 14 when you read from verse 6 to 11 i don't know if we can look at it is is a parable the parable of the talent remember he gave on to one five he gave on to one two he gave on to matthew 14 let's look at it from verse 6 sorry uh, that was the story of herodias keep it let's just read it since you've, you've put it up the bible says when herodias birthday was kept the, when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and please who? Are you ready to see carelessness again? Please read verse 7. One to read. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her. You see how careless people are? How in the world do you stand as a king? Who is responsible for the destinies of many and simply because a lady danced before you and you were happy and you made a careless statement that anything that means if she said get up from that throne are we together now verse 8 and she being therefore instructed of her mother said give me here john baptist's head in a charger and the king was sorry you, you see it now that every time people do careless things and say careless things eventually why do we lose in this kingdom because we are not thoughtful we are not guided by the word we are not guided by the spirit you see there are three faculties let me teach you this very quickly i wish i had time there are three faculties for by which we interact with this realm and we make decisions i will start from the third the third is emotions it is the weakest of all because it vacillates number two is reason based on logic and principles it is stronger than emotions the highest number one is discernment you see so we have emotions we have reason that is based on principles emotions are based on feelings they vacillate and they change reasoning is based on principles and so there is a measure of stability but the highest is discernment because it is based on the voice of god it is based on the word of god are we together now that means i can look at your life and know which of these faculties you have exalted if i see the vacillations around your decisions i know that you have exalted emotions above reason and above discernment if i see that you are excessively philosophical with no honor to the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i know you have exalted reason above emotion and above discernment in this order it is discernment then reason then emotions when the devil wants to destroy people he manipulates them because he's the master of the sense realm to exalt their emotions the moment you get to the realm of emotions you are in satan's domain he will play miserably with you can i tell you this both frustration and excitement can lead to emotions so whether you are responding from a state of excitement or a state of frustration if you are not careful and you're not guided you can be careless this man was excited and he said young girl whatever it is that you want i will give it to you and she met her mom and said mom look at this offer and the mom said finally i have a chance to kill a prophet and they killed him in a miserable way as though the spirit of god was never upon him that's the implication of carelessness are we learning number three very quickly why do we lose in this kingdom ignorance of the laws of the kingdom ignorance ignorance of the laws of the kingdom in psalm 82 and verse 5 popular scripture it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course they know not they know not this is a kingdom that thrives by knowledge proverbs 19 and verse 2 proverbs 19 and verse 2 the bible says through knowledge shall the just be delivered 
Proverbs 19 and verse 2. Are we there? It says also that the soul, okay, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. I was quoting another scripture. It says, and he that hasted with his feet seen it. So it is not good to be without knowledge. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and declare that this year 2022, this is the year you will contend for superior spiritual knowledge. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Make a commitment by God. Make a commitment by his grace. Ignorance of the ways of God. I'm tired of shadow boxing, living my life by guesswork, hoping I am right you can step into a level of predictability and excellence in your spiritual life through knowledge it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered in the name of jesus christ hallelujah number four why do we lose in this kingdom don't forget what we're dealing with we're examining why believers lose Number one, I said, is lack of discernment. Number two, carelessness. Number three, ignorance of the ways of God. Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. People lose financially because they do not understand the kingdom truths allocated for their excellence on that wise. People lose to principalities and powers and demons and live defeated lives because they do not understand the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer. Just knowing that victory has been purchased for us in Christ does not administer victory to you. The administration of victory is by light. Are we together now? Yes. So just being aware does not bless you the bible says in um ephesians 4 and verse 18 it says having the understanding darkened being alienated through from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart it takes knowledge it takes knowledge it takes knowledge it takes knowledge i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we together the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child a child means one who is void of knowledge he says he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all number four why do we lose in this kingdom abuse and misuse write it down please abuse and misuse a major reason why believers lose abuse and misuse just write for reference we may not have the time to go through it matthew chapter 25 when you read from verse 14 to 30 matthew 25 14 to 30 we abuse and we misuse time this was the story of the um uh what they call it now the five the the the, the three uh, people who, who were given talents parable of the talents one five one two and the other one and you can see how careful and intentional the first two were the last person was careless he went and buried his talent you bury seeds not talents you see that and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow. So I thought that instead of wasting your talent, I do you a favor by burying it. Here is your talent. And he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant. Abuse. The word abuse comes from two words. Abnormal use. Abnormal use. People abuse opportunities. They abuse access. They abuse moments. And they lose. Many people have abused access to great people access to great minds we continue to lose because of abuse abuse of privileges remember in second samuel just write it for reference again second samuel chapter 2 well let's read from 12 to 17 but the entire text is from chapter 12 of first samuel first samuel chapter 12 down to chapter 
1 Samuel chapter 2 down to 1 Samuel chapter 4. This was the story of the sons of Eli. But let's just look at chapter 2, 1 Samuel 2 from verse 12 to 17. The Bible talks about the sons of Eli. Remember, Hophni and Phinehas. The Bible says the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Read to 17. It says, and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifices, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in sitting with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Uh -huh. And they struck into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. It was a privilege of priesthood. And this principle still works till today in the body of Christ. Are you seeing that now? There are privileges that priesthood brings, but there can be the abuse of it. To cut the story, the long story short, it was that when the meat or whatever the sacrifice was boiling, you are given the privilege to put that fork and whatever you bring out, it is your own blessing from the Lord. But the Hophni and Fini has said, uh -uh, before you boil it, let us clearly look at it and pick you see that they kept taking advantage of the fact that their father was a priest you will see their end remember the story Ichabod when the ark of God was taken they were also captured and killed they brought Eli a report and said listen your sons are dead that was not even what disturbed him they said the ark of the Lord has been captured he fell down broke his neck and that was the end of it abuse 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 and misuse we many of us have misused privileges we have misused opportunities have you heard people say i'm connected to so many people and none of them can help me find out why none of them can help you even though you are close to them you abuse access to their numbers you call them every time and say you are not answering me have you forgotten we are relatives abuse and and you know sadly speaking africa we are masters of abuse we abuse opportunities we abuse moments you have acts uh, there, there is an entitlement mentality are we together now we just believe that someone somewhere owes us to succeed and come and bring a, a an honorarium from that success abuse and misuse number five why do people lose the final reason i'll give you is tests and trials it is true that when we go through seasons of tests and trials like the bible shows it is possible that we lose things in james chapter one from verse two and three james chapter one from verse two and three here's what the bible says brethren so he's talking to brethren he's not talking to they who are outside of faith count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations he says knowing this your confidence should be based on this knowledge that the trying of your faith walketh patience the trying of your faith walketh patience are we together now it is true that when people are going through seasons of prunings and trainings it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true that people momentarily can lose things are we together we read all through scripture that people were constrained when david was in the cave of adulam running away he lost several things opportunities even though he had people there with him when joseph on account of his 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 diligence and his his honor to god and to the integrity of his person he found himself in the prison he lost the opportunity to be the head even though he was a slave there were privileges that were withdrawn from him so there are times that we go through seasons that on account of the dealings of god in our lives on account of several things it is possible that we can lose some of these things maybe you are a person of integrity in the office and on account of your integrity is possible that momentarily you can lose a few things privileges opportunities
these are the five reasons i have examined from scripture and from experience why people lose let me do a one minute recap lack of discernment carelessness ignorance of the laws of the kingdom abuse and misuse then tests and trials but i have good news for you that in the name of jesus it does not matter by which means by the power that raised christ from the dead there must be restoration in your life in the name of jesus christ now please pay attention let me give you by the spirit about four keys that are responsible for restoration are you ready number one the first key that is truly responsible for restoration if you want god to restore moments time or whatever it is in your life the first key is self-examination the power of self-examination second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 it says to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith prove your own selves examine yourself can i tell you this when people are downcast they do not take the personal responsibility of saying listen why am i here this is not self-condemnation you have to learn to sit with yourself why are things not working for this family why is it that i have been in lagos for 10 years and i've only celebrated the testimony of others there is something about the responsibility of thoughtfulness that most believers do not submit themselves to. You have to sit down and ask yourself honest questions. The Bible says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Luke chapter 15 from verse 17. I'll just cut it and start from verse 17. This is a very classic story that, that demonstrates responsibility and the power of self-examination. This is the story of the prodigal son. The Bible says when he came to, he never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Uh -uh. You, it is within your power to come to yourself. Sometimes you see pain is a gift because it can bring you to a point where you come to yourself it is true when things happen too cheap when you keep reaping harvest for seeds you did not sow there are many of us who have been shielded by the love of others and it has never given us an opportunity to examine ourselves whether you sow or not someone's harvest he will share it with you and chances are excellent that you can think that because you are receiving a harvest outsourced from another you don't see the value of seed time you don't see the value of anything because someone else is shielding you the power of self-examination you must learn this have a time where you stay alone with god lock yourself go somewhere and say lord i i am not happy at the way my life is going proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says a, it says through desire a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom once you separate yourself you have separated yourself from foolishness too the moment you take the pain of separating yourself it is wisdom you will encounter are we together yes why is my business not working why is my spiritual life not working i've been born again for 10 years but i barely know anything about the principles of scripture why is it that i'm not attentive in church you have to examine yourself and ask yourself very honest questions the power of self-examination number two what is the second key that makes for restoration brokenness psalm 51 and verse 17 brokenness do you know what brokenness is brokenness is a state of recognition recognizing your inadequacy your inability to help yourself unassisted 
that if God does not come into this equation of my life to help me, my best will still be limited. Brokenness. Many people want God to restore them, restore their dignity and their honor, but that sense of self-righteousness and pride is still alive there. In the story of the prodigal son, listen, the father did not come to meet the rebellious, arrogant son. The father came to meet a son that was already repentant and was ready to be restored. Are we together? Brokenness is very powerful. You walked out on your CEO and you lost your job. You are secretly hoping you will get back to the job. But you do not have the humility to be broken to admit that I was wrong. And somehow you are hoping. It does not work that way. Brokenness is not, um, brokenness is not something you assume. It is a state that everyone around you will know this person is broken. There are many people today, if they were broken enough, they would have re relationships restored together with the privileges. If that boy sat down there, the prodigal son, I presume if he stayed one more year in that foolishness, he would have died because he was already close to death. He said, how many hired servants does my father have and i'm here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father and when i meet him i will say father i have sinned i won't say father it was just my mind my mind was playing some emotional games call it what it is i have sinned against you i have sinned against heaven the character of brokenness is that it admits without shame are we together pastor i am sorry i offended you this is not the way it should be it was carelessness i take full responsibility that's brokenness the bible says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise many 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 people are unable to experience restoration in their lives because they are not genuinely broken genuinely broken there are many children who would get back the support of their parents their sponsors their loved ones if only they communicate brokenness in truth and in sincerity is that true brokenness number three what's the third key that makes for restoration knowledge 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 Proverbs 11, I, I believe verse 9 says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Not knowledge of your situation or knowledge of what you want. Knowledge of what it takes listen most people know what they want they even know what they don't want but they do not have the knowledge of what it takes is that true so this is what i want i desire this so desperately and this is it here the bible says that this should be given to me but you must know have the requisite level of spiritual illumination that takes you from prophecy to experience otherwise you will keep wishing things that will never never manifest in your life it takes more than knowing what god has said it takes more than knowing what god has told you to have it is that true you must find out the the participatory condition he has connected to that promise you're acting in keeping with the condition is your demonstration of faith that faith is not just believing alone believing is part of the process of faith faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as a sign that you believe God I don't know if I've demonstrated it here but say for instance I call this gentleman and I say come and pick this you see don't come but just say you are coming say you are coming 
Look at this. Shout it again. Say, I'm coming. I'm coming. 2018. Say, you are coming. coming. 2019. Coming. Say, you are coming. coming. 2020. The promise is still there waiting. Yeah. You have not manifested faith. No. You've just been wishing that you will have it. Yeah. And someone will come in 2022. My brother, walk and come and collect it. And you are wondering, where did you come from? Uh-uh. It is the person who took the action of faith. Lord, I'm going to build a house. You've never found out where there's an empty land. You are waiting for your bank account. It does not cost money to go and know where land is. And say, Lord, I have seen the land. And someone who came from nowhere, now the person is roofing his house and you are wondering. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what it takes as prescribed by scripture to make what God has said be manifest in your life. Are we together? Thank you. Knowledge. We need high level spiritual illumination. Let me challenge you. I want you to go back home and write a list of all the areas in your life where you have not seen the word of God produce the kind of result that you desire knowing that God is glorified in your results remember what the Bible says it says let your light so shine before men that they may see God wants men to see because in seeing the result that proceeds from you they will glorify God Herein is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit, not little fruit, sustainable, predictable results brings glory to the name of the Lord. Are we together? Galatians 1.25, it says, And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. The excellency of the workings of the word in and through your life it compels all and sundry to know that Jesus Christ is lifted and glorified in and through your life. God is counting on everyone here as a membership, counting on individuals that through your life, your life will become a living epistle. Someone will look at your life this year and anything he did not understand in the morning, he will look at your life for the explanation. If he, if he read his Bible in the morning and he saw that God was faith, that God is faithful and he did not get that Bible study, God will tell him, look at this pastor as an explanation, a clarification to what you have learned that's what it means to be a living epistle your life explains what people do not understand about God when God says that he can favor men if they say Lord I, 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 is it real that you can favor men he personifies his word embodies it in an individual so that you become a demonstration of it Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. There are certain results that are not within the realm of men. When you see men manifest that result, it, it, it was outsourced from a dimension that is higher than this human dimension. And I'm praying for someone here. The frequency of results that you will begin to walk in. You will be the first person surprised by your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Do not allow anybody downplay the place of results. Your Christian experience will remain a frustrated experience. If you do not have genuine notable results Gentiles will not come to you they will come to your light their kings will not come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising preachers here whether in this ministry or those who came this is the year to contend for high levels of spiritual power high levels of wisdom the kind of wisdom that is connected to mighty works 
business people this is the year to operate at a dimension that your contemporaries will come to you and say we have discerned that God is with you believe what I'm saying results are powerful results can evangelize they, there are there are there are certain messages that only results can preach the Bible said the Greek seek for a sign the world is tired of vain explanations from Christians one genuine result in the name of the Lord can bring to end decades of confusion knowledge we rise in this kingdom by knowledge there is what you must know there is what you must know to reign and to excel there is what you must know to remain on fire there is what you must know to access the spirit of wisdom there is what you must know about kingdom influence there is what you must know about longevity there is what you must know about wealth and abundance there is what you must know about dominion over systems and structures there is what you must know about relationships the question is which aspect of your life are you short go back and become a spiritual archaeologist he said for everyone that seek it find it jesus gave a parable we're praying now he gave a parable and he said the kingdom is likened to an individual who lost a coin in a room the coin means a treasure the power to make purchases was missing in the room he knew that he, that coin is somewhere the first thing he did was he brought light the second thing he did was to carry a broom and started sweeping i know this breakthrough is somewhere in scripture i don't know what verse i don't know what principle but i know in scripture god lifts i know in scripture god restores i've not understood the dynamics you are sweeping sweeping with messages sweeping with prophetic words and the bible says she found it and she rejoiced can i tell you this every time you claim you have found something and it does not show in your life you are yet to find it i found your word and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul listen light is powerful light is powerful when you find this thing you have found it believe me listen you can gain mastery in the spirit you truly can gain mastery in the spirit he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully move past the realm of trial and error shadow boxing and hoping that one thing or the other will work you can rise to a level of predictability in your christian experience that you wake up in the morning and you know you will be favored today you know paul said but i know whom i have believed he said i am persuaded knowledge knowledge you must submit yourself through the labor dimension of faith to access knowledge no matter how great a door is there is a small key that opens it and you can put that key in your pocket but if that key is missing you can stand before that door from morning till night but then if you find the key that is knowledge you need understanding because there are times that you can have the key and the dynamics of opening that door some doors you turn once some doors you turn twice for others you turn and do some other things the bible says in all thy getting get understanding knowledge tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it knowledge says give but understanding tells you how to give in a way that prospers you knowledge tells you pray understanding tells you 
how to pray to get results knowledge says fast understanding tells you the kind of fast that has been commanded it's good to have knowledge but in addition to knowledge have understanding understanding brings stability to your life my time is up number four the last and then we'll pray be sensitive now i want to pray for you the fourth key that activates restoration is the prophetic hmm. <laughs> someone's life is changing hmm. isaiah 42 and verse 22 isaiah 42 and verse 22 never forget this scripture but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none deliver it read with me they are for a spoil and none say it restore restoration does not just happen someone must say it none say yet restore none say yet restore in second kings chapter 6 when you read the first seven verses very quickly second kings chapter 6 this was a very interesting rendition the bible says the sons of the prophet said unto elisha behold now the place where we meet with you is too small so they, it was a desire to advance next verse it says let us go we pray thee unto jordan and take thee every man a beam and let us make a place where we may dwell and he answered and said go ye verse 3 and one said be content i pray thee go with thy servants and he answered and he said i will go verse 4 so he went with them and they came to jordan and cut down wood but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed wise man many people would try to jump inside the river and die there no there are certain results that you cannot just get it by yourself god has positioned people within the body that in addition and in connection to your faith this man cried and said alas master i'm in trouble i borrowed this the prophet said where fell it and he answered he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it thither and the iron did swim the iron did swim the finances that left you did come back because you see everything that left you is still on earth under a certain condition it can come back this is true please listen to me when the prophetic is administered outside the boundary of scripture it just becomes a display of ignorance with no potency and power but when the prophetic is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture it works wonders listen to me my beloved people there is a dimension of growth and restoration and excellence that only the prophetic can bring to your life when you lose money it's not another business that will bring the money back no you will only waste your time and keep digging deeper it is the prophetic that will bring it back it may look like a physical structure brought it back but it is the prophetic the economy of a whole land had gone down and a prophet said by this time tomorrow he gave it the timing and by the morrow there was restoration i saw this vision and i knew that the lord wanted me to teach and charge and prophesy restoration listen to me god can restore men god can restore things 
and God can restore time. Do you know how God restores time? He does not take you backward. He takes what was in your yesterday that should have happened that did not happen. He brings it into your tomorrow. Are you getting the point now? You have to understand how God restores because God does not exist in time. He does not even exist in eternity because eternity is time. It's just time without end. Infinite summations, you no know, summations of infinite dispensations. God dwells in a realm that is neither eternity nor time. So there is nothing like past, present and future with God. That reality is only given to men to help us relate with God. There is no such thing as a future. There is no such thing as past. God's realm is now. That's it. So your yesterday is as clear and real to God as your tomorrow. There is no difference. Are we together? So he can move something that should have happened in year 2000, 2015. Maybe at that time when that prophetic word would have come, you were not sensitive. God can move it into January and February and make it happen in your life. This is restoration. In one minute, wherever you are, I want you to pray very passionately and cry based on this word. Ask the Lord to bring restoration. Don't waste this moment. Go ahead and pray. All the centers that are following overflows, those following online, here is your chance to contact the grace that makes for restoration. Lift your voice and pray. And I will restore. Someone pray. Let there be restoration. Pray. God can restore people. Relationships. God can restore things. And God can restore years. Someone is praying. Lord, I've wasted 10, 15 years of my life. I wasted it not being a believer. But now in Christ. I am aware that it is within your power to restore. I call for that restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. It was the Lord that brought them. But the instrument was the prophetic. It says, and by a prophet, they were preserved. Let me read this one scripture. And then I'll just take two or three minutes to just minister and speak over your life. And we'll end with an altar call. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11. Please do not forget this scripture. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11. Restore, I pray you to them. Even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, their houses, also a hundred part of the money and of the corn and wine and oil that ye exact of them. Listen to that scripture someone is making a decree he said restore everything their lands vineyards olive yards houses hundred part of the money the corn the wine the oil verse 12 
then said they we will obey we will restore them and will require nothing of them so we will do as thou sayest then i called the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to his promise it was the priest that came to seal it a command has come restore but there must be the priest that says sign you must make this happen restore restore my joy restore victory restore everything listen the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion it says we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden the Lord had done great things for them he says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev I sense in my spirit that there are people here I tell you I sense such a strong anointing we just have about two or three minutes we're not taking too much time but I want you to believe in the power of God the power of God is his currency for purchasing realities for believers That as a result of this encounter many of you will return with tearsome testimonies and will say i've not seen it in this fashion before hallelujah there are three categories of people i want to pray with very quickly very very quickly and then i just speak over our lives number one I want to impart the grace for speed listen truly believe me when I tell you there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace for speed that when that grace comes upon an individual you know because you will have dominion over time dominion over time many of us are, are limited by time dominion over time I want to pray for you I sense such a strong anointing I'm seeing the number 24 even though I'm going to pray for everyone we, we, we have just my time is up so we'll not have we still have a session hopefully tomorrow either here or any of the centers but I want you to be very very sensitive I want to pray now there are people you are moving but your life is too slow you don't have all the time for that level of slow movement i want to pray there are people who will start running by the anointing please i want you to help them if you can bring them out here let's have them i stretch my hands to the god of heaven no 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 you don't have to come out your the anointing will bring you out in the name of jesus right now by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic I decree and declare bring them out Paratos Sanekatea Kepre Katos Speed Take that grace Take that grace In the name of Jesus Who is the son of the living God I decree and declare over families Over businesses Speed 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 HICC Lekki hear the word of the Lord I decree and declare over you speed in the name of Jesus speed in business speed in your spiritual adventure my goodness may that hand of God rest upon you in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus bring them out if you can just one minute and we're done Parandesh Kadila Kaposiata every delay that has kept you bound so that you want to move forward and you're unable to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ I come by the privilege of the election of grace and I declare those chains let you go now let you go now let you go now speed speed every closed door that will not let you move forward i speak to that door a father be open a father 
be open doors of opportunities in the name of Jesus doors of grace doors of new seasons doors of discernment doors of the prophetic doors of the apostolic in the name of Jesus Christ everything you have lost that left your life and should not have left I stand by the power of the prophetic between now and the next three months I call upon my God hear me I'm speaking to you everything that left Kapatos Katigata that left your life your destiny in 90 days by the spirit of grace I command it to be restored now everywhere the overflows the centers be restored be restored be restored be restored be restored and anyone holding what should get to your hands and has refused to release it i call upon the god of jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind let it be restored a hundredfold every pending project that you've started and has refused to be completed the bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will become will, will, will perfect it i pray 2022 i speak it that let this be your year of completion what god has started in your life this is the year you will see it completed hallelujah final prayer for you every destiny helper anointed to locate you and partner with prophecy as far as your restoration is concerned wherever they are i prophesy to the north the south and the east and the west by the spirit of grace i call them to your life now I call them to Abakosh Katebeleka Tabasia. I call them to your life now. HICC, hear me. I speak to you by the spirit of grace. Enlarge to the left. Enlarge to the right. Enlarge to the east. Enlarge to the west. Break forth to new seasons. In the name of Jesus Christ businesses break forth families break forth ministries break forth career break forth in the name of jesus that when men say there is a casting down for you let it be that this year there is a lifting up hear me everyone who is part of this spiritual family whether here represented in this branch across the other branches connecting from around the world i speak and i decree and declare in the name of jesus as god has declared to the man of god and his wife i join my faith with them and i speak this year may you see a performance of prophecy in the name of jesus and for all who are out here I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything limiting you it goes for your sake now you will go and return with testimonies from this night not tomorrow from this night in the name of Jesus Christ please return to your seats rejoicing now very quickly we're out of time I want to make an altar call listen we are in the days of his power we are in the days where it is costly to reject jesus here's what the bible says please look up let me have your attention all the overflows all the centers following please pay attention there are men and women you must find them in every meeting ordained by god and of god who 
come there in need of genuine salvation others in need of restoration spiritual restoration and i believe there are people in this auditorium all the overflows and all those who are following you're saying apostle i genuinely need jesus christ not just as a religious or church thing i need a functional relationship with the god of the bible and there are others who are saying apostle i need restoration as it stands i cannot say i'm proud of my spiritual life i know that i need restoration very quickly we have just a minute for you wherever you are inside here i want you to quickly come and stand before me i'm going to count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain one you want to make jesus lord of your life please don't come arbitrarily make sure you understand what you are doing two thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done the greatest experience that the believer can have is the experience of receiving the life of jesus in this encounter that we call the new birth an exchange of your weakness for his strength his life imparted into your spirit for all of you who are in front here whether making a first time decision or rededicating your hearts to jesus please lift your hands high above your head say this after me truthfully don't play games with god we are in the days where we need high level spirituality to excel in this life some of you are crying there's no reason to be ashamed this is an encounter with jesus say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i come before you just as i am i ask you to wash me to cleanse me make me anew i believe that jesus is my savior my lord and king and i receive eternal life into my spirit from today i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and scripture declares that as many who would come to you you will in no wise cast away i pray by the authority of scripture and i declare that your sins are forgiven and i decree and declare that you are recipients of the life of god in the name of jesus i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight and forever you walk in the newness of life in jesus name i pray now i see um forms okay just just be patient the counselors are handing you over a card please do well to have the card before you go back now here's what will require of you please do well to complete the cards legibly and i believe that after the service there should be an usher of someone who you can pass it to um complete all the details required make sure you have the card once you have the card you can do well to go back to your seat i hope i'm right on that praise the lord hallelujah and for all of us who are left i declare one last time that in the name of jesus as a result of this encounter every expectation that you have the bible says your expectation will not be cut short i pray for you everything that represents a request by the god of heaven who is my god and your god i declare let it come to pass speedily in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in jesus name i pray